Presenting from Apelles to Apollo. This is a 19th century facsimile of the title page to John Weaver's book, Epigrams in the Oldest Cut and the Newest Fashion. These are companion epigrams. As explained by Alexander Waugh in his videos, John Weaver knew part one and John Weaver knew part two. They allegedly chastise a powerful Earl. I believe I have found evidence hidden in these epigrams which argues against the claim these epigrams admonish him. I have also found word links, gematria sum puzzles, and other clues that point to a specific Earl. Before I give you the word links, I will read them out. Epigram 11. In spurium quendum scriptorum. Apelles did so paint bare Venus queen, that most supposed he had fair Venus seen. But thy bald rhymes of Venus favor so, that I dare swear thou dost all Venus know. Epigram 22. Ad Guglielmum Shakespeare. Honey tongue Shakespeare, when I saw thine issue, I swore Apollo got them, and no one other. Their rosy tainted features clothed in tissue, some heaven born goddess said to be their mother. Rose checked Adonis with his amber tresses, fair air fire hot Venus charming him to love her. Chaste Lucretia, virgin like her dresses. Proud lust dung Tarquin, seeking still to prove her. Romeo Richard, more whose names I know not, their sugared tongues and power, attractive beauty. Say they are saints, although that saints they show not. For thousands bows to them, subjective duty. They burn in love, thy children, Shakespeare, het them. Go, woe thy muse, more nymphish brood beget them. So here are the word links. The word fair is repeated three times among these, satisfying the triacent omnia principle. The name Venus appears five times. We have the name Apelles and its cognate Apollo. And if you stack epigram 11 above epigram 22, the names are separated by 40 words. The first fair is preceded by 17 letters on line 1 of epigram 11. The second fair is the 17th word in the epigram. This fair from epigram 22 is the 34th Roman word in that epigram. The positions of the word fair are analogous to the epigram numbers. The number 11 is half of 22, just as 17 is half of 34. 17 Roman words separate fair from Shakespeare. Don't forget that the hyphen makes honey-tongued one word. The same number of words precede the name in Johnson's poem in the 1623 first folio. This does not seem like a coincidence. Just as fair is the 17th word, the word honey-tongued is the 17th Roman word after fair. Let's look at some gematria clues. The gematria sum of these two letters is 17. The gematria sum of these two letters, the first two letters down the left-hand column of epigram 22, is also 17. And this acrostic, H-I-T, spells hid in early spelling. 
The gematria sum of Roman uppercase letters in the epigram 22 is 244. The gematria sum of italic uppercase letters in the same epigram is 122. And the word count is 110. 244 plus 122 plus 110 is the digit sum number of 476. 4 plus 7 is 11, plus 6 is 17. The sum is a clue who is being addressed as Guglielmo Shakespeare. The name is a giveaway that it is not real, because it's a mix of Latin and English. The gematria sum of all uppercase letters in epigram 11 is 130, and the number of words is 32. So we add the two together to get 162. 476 plus 162 is 638, another digit sum number. The sums in these titles is 60. That is, we take the gematria sums plus the seven words. 638 minus 60 is 578 or 17 times 34. 638 plus 60 is 698. 698 minus 33, the numbers of the epigrams, is 665, another digit sum number. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Here are our numbers. 17 is the base number for all of these sums. 3 are multiples of 17. 17 times 1, 17 times 2, and 1 is 17 times its double. Three of these are digit sum numbers. So what do these titles mean? In Spurium Quendum Scriptorum, Ad Gil Yelmum Shakespeare. The first one means to the one who writes spuriously or falsely. Ad Gilmum Shakespeare means to William Shakespeare. Now I did an experiment with these two titles. What can we do with them? Can we connect them to make a proper sentence? I mean, it certainly sounds like it. It's been more than 46 years since I've taken Latin. In Spurium Quendum Scriptorum, Ad Guglielmum Shakespeare. To the one who writes spuriously or falsely to William Shakespeare. The nay could be in the nominative second declension. If a word ends in U.S., then the accusative ends in U.M. Tullius becomes Tullium. It could be the insigular accusative, which can be translated as for the purpose of. I believe it is in the singular accusative because the name on the birth certificate notice is Gilgelmus, so the declension U.M. is correct. That means Gilgelmus is the direct object of the sentence and the spurious illegitimate writing is being done to it. What does this do to the word add? Does it now mean to the one who spuriously writes as to William Shakespeare? Now, who is Apelles? In my handy classical dictionary from 1910 or thereabouts, they define Apelles as the following. Apelles, a celebrated painter of Kos, or as others say, of Ephesus, son of Pythias. He lived in the age of Alexander the Great, who forbade anyone but Apelles to paint his portrait. He was so absorbed in his profession that he never allowed a day to pass without employing his art. Hence the proverb of nulla die sine linea. Not a day goes by without a line. He only put his name to three of his pictures. The proverb ne sultor ultra crepidam has been used in reference to him by some scholars. 
Notice he was an anonymous painter. His most famous work is a lost allegorical painting, Calumny. The proverb associated with the Peles is interesting. This Latin proverb translates as shoemaker, do not go beyond the shoe. In other words, do not go beyond your skills or learning. It seems to apply to these lines, which are addressed to an unnamed poet of lesser skill than a Pele's is a painter. But thy bald rhymes of Venus favor so, that I dare swear thou dost all Venus know. But thy bald rhymes seems to refer to someone other than a Pele's. The last line in Epigrammas 11 is therefore meant to be read ironically. Weaver is telling another poet, not Apelles, that his verse is poor, which cannot be said of the poems Venus and Adonis or Lucrece. Let's look at the lost painting of Apelles through Botticelli's eyes in his painting, The Calumny of Apelles from 1494-1495. At the far left, truth points to heaven. The truth is sacred and naked, therefore it is visible to all. Repentance looks backwards to truth. Conspiracy in the middle, here in the red, aids her sister's fraud and slander. Envy, the figure here in black, is blinding the king, Midas. Ignorance is whispering in his right ear. Suspicion is whispering in his left ear. Apelles is the victim of these things. He was wrongly accused of plotting against his king. That means the poet who wrote Venus and Adonis has been slandered and wrongly accused of treason like Apelles. We cannot say this of the man from Stratford, Guillermo Shakespeare, at all. So this epigram, number 22, was meant for a hidden poet who was treated like a Pele's. There was one contemporary poet who was treated exactly like the legendary painter. In 1580-81, he was accused of many things such as atheism, lying, and plotting against the queen. Those charges proved to be false. He also wrote anonymously like Apelles painted and used the Shakespeare pen name. As Apelles is to painting, so this poet is to comedy, as Francis Mears said in Pallidus Tamia, or Wit's Treasury. To identify Apelles further with the playwright, we can see that the theme of slander runs throughout the plays, especially against women. In Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1, we have these lines, addressed to Ophelia. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. And calumny means being wrongly accused of something. Here are some other characters. In addition to Ophelia, we have Desdemona, who is wrongly accused of infidelity by Othello. Anne Page was also wrongly accused of infidelity in The Merry Wives of Windsor. Mrs. Ford, in the same play, was accused of infidelity by her husband. Hero, in Much Ado About Nothing, was also accused wrongly, as well as Helena in All's Well That Ends Well. Like Apollo, from Epigram 22, the poet was a great patron of the arts, so this epigram can be linked to him. 
Given the allusions to Apelles and Apollo, verbal connections, numerical clues, and epigram titles, we can conclude that Guglielmo Shakespeare was a pseudonym. This man, like Midas accused Apelles, he accused his wife of treason against their marriage vows based on lies. Like Apelles only signed three paintings, he is credited for writing only around a dozen poems and no plays. Of course, we are talking about Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.